late afternoon or early afternoon we're having some weird weather it's dark it's gray and I you guys Houstonians let's huddle up I'm freaked out because here we are February it's hot this does not bode well for summer we're not having a winter we're just having summer in January and February I'm concerned I mean I've lived here now for how many years? Four? Going on four years. And the winter here is brief, but it does exist in that you feel the temperature drop and there's a, a cold spell. You need a little lightweight jacket uh, most days in January, February. I'm wearing shorts and a tank top right now and I've got this cute little kimono thing on that I got from a FabFitFun box just to complete this, I don't know, let me read your palms look I'm rocking here. I don't really know what got into me this morning with this get up. But yeah, I mean, it's boiling hot. I'm like sweating bullets right now. It's hot. Um, so yeah, that's a little weather update, but I still got my Happy Holidays mug. <laughs> I need to find a, another mug this size. Ever since my It's All Good mug handle broke off, I haven't found a replacement for that. I've also got Totoro, of course, but I've been brewing the Four Sigmatic ground coffee in my French press lately, and I like to make a really big serving of that, and it overflows Totoro, so I've been going back to my Happy Holidays mug. But anyway, today's kind of an odd day, you guys, vlog-wise. My mom actually is ocupado. Uh, along with Ty B. So it's just gonna be me talking to you guys. I don't know, I just kind of feel like chit-chatting with you all, kind of about various and sundry. I hope that's okay. I'm not going anywhere today. It's kind of nasty out. It's like gray. It's supposed to rain, which there's, yeah, I don't wanna get stuck in that. Yeah, it's just kind of a weird day today. I put on my Costco LED lights in the background there for mood lighting. What can I tell you guys that you're here to actually hear? <laughs> and that is, I've got some hair care updates for you guys. Um, you'll recall I ordered the Function of Beauty hair mask a while ago. I've been using this a few times a week, once a week, twice a week here and there, and I really like it. And as I mentioned, I love, for, I love Function of Beauty. I use their shampoo and conditioner currently, and it's great. The thing I love about that service is that you can get hair care products that are customized to your hair type, and then you can select to not have fragrance or dyes, which I love because, as I said in last weekend's vlog in CVS, it's really hard to find hair care products, particularly like hair care products for people with textured hair, curly hair, color treated hair. Um, it's really hard to find products like that that don't have at least fragrance and a ton of other garbagey ingredients in them. So yeah, I wanted to update you guys. I've been using this and I really like it. Basically, I shampoo my hair, I condition my hair with the function, shampoo and condition my hair with the Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner. And then uh, in addition to that, once a week, I will put this on the um, bottom third 
of my hair and let it sit on there for a few minutes and then rinse it rinse it out and it definitely helps cut down on just frizziness and it really makes the, the ends of my hair look look nice at the end of the day at, at the following morning is what i'm getting at so yeah love that but you all had asked for some more kind of recommendations for curly hair and textured hair and i'm going to give a shout out to this product because I think it's one, you know, I don't have textured hair, so I may totally be speaking out of my element, but this one I've been recommending a lot. Um, and I think it's one worth considering. It is, you guys know I like this brand, Claire. They're really, they're really killing it with their line, you guys. This, this brand, cruelty-free, um, all cruelty-free products, all free of added fragrance. So they're ideal for people with, you know, they're marketed to pe for people with sensitive skin. But I feel like we should get a, get rid of that marketing term, sensitive skin, because everybody else who doesn't experience burning, tingling, irritation when they put stuff on their skin assumes they don't have sensitive skin, and then they end up choosing the wrong products. But if they just stuck to the products marketed for those with sensitive skin, they would probably be better off from the get-go because they be avoiding fragrance and things that cause problems for the skin uh, long term. So yeah, all that ranting aside, this product, their conditioning mist. So this product is free of added fragrance and it's intended to be sprayed on the hair while it's wet. It can be used as a detangler for those of you who uh, are looking for a detangler. Although I don't recommend combing your hair while it's wet. That puts a lot of uh, stress on the hair shaft and definitely can exacerbate frizz and hair breakage. Um, but you know, my hair, I, I don't comb it with sweat. I just let it air dry. And then the following morning, my hair, because of the texture of it, has de auto detangled and I don't have like, like tangles, but some hair types, that's not gonna be the case. And you like to use products like this, like a leave-on conditioner or a detangler. So it's, it works great for that. Um, but, and also it can just kind of help keep your curls smooth if you have curly hair. The first ingredient is water and the second ingredient is glycerin. I don't think I've spent enough time emphasizing to you guys how wonderful glycerin is for hair shaft care and for the hair. Um, you know, I've talked about a lot of different oils because there's a lot of enthusiasm from you guys about different oils for the hair like jojoba oil and coconut oil. And I've talked about how those oils can help in reducing hyperol fatigue. But believe it or not, glycerin, a humectant, is actually really good for the hair shaft. This brand also has, you know, some of my favorite fragrance-free shampoos and conditioners. Obviously, I love the Function Beauty one. That's the one I'm using. But I always recommend the Vanny Cream one because there's just so few fragrance-free shampoos and conditioners. Vanny Cream makes one. And then the Whole Foods, let me get another sip of coffee. Whole Foods, what is it, 365 makes a a fragrance-free shampoo and conditioner. But about, I don't know, 60% at least of you, 60% of you at least, uh, will not get along with that shampoo, those shampoos and conditioners because they're not great for every single hair type. You know, they're they're fine for me and my hair type, but they're not great for, for all hair types. Try the Claire shampoo and conditioner. These I find are more friendly for, um, for more textured hair types. Give them a try and see what you think. And the surfactant in the shampoo is going to be disodium coca diacetate. And it also has uh, coca glucoside in it. And so it's got some very gentle surfactants. No sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate can be very drying, not only for the scalp, but also for the hair shaft. I mean, it's not a demon ingredient or anything. I've got a video talking about sulfates. But yeah, this doesn't have sulfates in it if you find that some of those sulfate uh, surfactants are too irritating for your scalp or drying to your hair shaft. Uh, yeah, I recommend these, they're pretty good. Uh, free of added, I keep saying free of added fragrance, but duh, it goes without saying. But speaking of fragrance, you guys know in my, another sip here, happy holidays. In my uh, last FabFit Fun Box, I got a shampoo and conditioner called Television, I think is what it was called, by this R & Co. I've tried it out a number of times. Not something I would recommend because, all right, here's the deal. 
Chelly goes to avoid fragrance, but those of you who know me know I like a little bit of fragrance. I say a little bit, like, like a little bit pregnant, whatever. I mean, it's either there or it's not. I like to use shampoos and conditioners that smell good. So, uh, that's, you know, that's my vice. Um, and so I use shampoos and conditioners that have fragrance, even though I tell you guys, do your best to try and just choose those that don't. Anyways, so I have tried out the R & Co television shampoo and conditioner and the fragrance on that, I can't quite decide how I feel about it. Um, because while I'm shampooing my hair with it, I feel as though they're like I'm in a casino. I don't know like where I'm getting this sensation from and not like a, you know, they're different kind of types of casino. I mean, I don't frequent the casinos, <laughs> let's be honest, but I have been to Las Vegas a number of times. I think I've been in pretty much every single casino in Las Vegas. And if you've ever been to Las Vegas, I mean, you know, some casinos, you know, some of the hotel casinos are, bougier than others and so i feel like i'm in a one of the bougier ones and by bougie i mean i guess i would say like the win is one of the bougier ones <laughs> and i haven't been in several years but uh yeah i kind of get that feel like i'm in one of those nicer las vegas hotel casinos you know how they diffuse stuff in the air to like distract you from the fact that you're just throwing money away. I don't gamble, which is why I'm not really into casinos, but yeah, Vegas, anyway, Vegas is a fun time, regardless if you gamble or not. It can be an enjoyable time in, in small doses. I digress. So yeah, shampoo, while I'm shampooing and conditioning with it, I feel like I'm in Las Vegas, in a Las Vegas casino. A nice one. Uh, rinsing it out though, it, it does kind of, it leaves more of a masculine, kind of musky scent behind, uh, which I guess is, I kind of like. I can't decide if I like it or not. But the shampoo and conditioner itself, television, isn't too, too bad. Uh, you know, I've, I've used it a number of times. It's not drying or irritating per se, uh, and it leaves my hair smooth and shiny. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much it costs. It came in the FabFitFun box. I, I'm, I'm willing to guess it's expensive, and therefore it's not something I would buy. <laughs> Um, but, uh, anyways, they actually sent me this product, the Palm Springs pre-shampoo pre, pre treatment. I kind of like the principle of this, even though obviously it's not something I'm going to be keen on recommending because it's just a spray bottle of perfume. But the idea with this product is that you spray it on your hair, let it sit on there for 10 minutes before hopping into the shower to shampoo. I like this idea of, of a pre-shampoo conditioning product because the issue with shampooing, particularly for people with, um, with more textured hair types, is that, I mean, it, it's a delicate balance. You've gotta go in there with the aim of scalp cleansing while simultaneously doing everything you can to protect your actual hair shafts from how damaging the shampoo can be to the hair shaft. Um, so, you know, I kind of like the idea of this, coat the hair with um, some nice, you know, this has some nice oils in it that I've talked about for hair care. Uh, it has argon oil in it and it has shea butter, which is great for, for, for protecting the hair shaft. So I like that idea. But do you need a product necessarily like this that's packed with a lot of perfume? No, I think a better way to use this idea is to just put some argon oil or shea butter on your actual hair shafts, let it sit on there and then hop in the shampoo for, hop in the shampoo, hop in the shower to to shampoo your scalp. I think that is a much better better way to, to approach doing something like this. Or, you know, maybe you could use glycerin. I haven't ever actually tried that myself. So I can't tell you much about the logistics of applying glycerin to the hair, but I do know uh, that it works well. In fact, um, I was listening to um, a talk by some of my colleagues in, who see a lot of uh, hair disorders, and they were saying how glycerin is an ingredient that is underutilized in kind of hair care and under, under promoted. So that's kind of why I'm on this glycerin kick for hair, but I've never used it myself. What does this have in it besides argon oil and shea butter? 
<laughs> the fragrance ingredients are limonene, linalu, and citral, and then they say parfum fragrance. So yeah, those are the obvious fragrance ingredients. Babusa seed oil. I couldn't tell you anything about babusa, but that's in here. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, obviously from an environmental perspective, I don't really think that these aerosolized sprays, you know, to me it seems like we should try and minimize the number of these types of things that we buy and use for the sake of the environment. Uh, so I think the argon oil minimal approach is better, but comment below on if you guys do something like that. So yeah, those are some hair care products that I got. Um, I had to change the battery. Um, but, oh, side note, one of you guys were, you asked in one of my, was it Instagram or a comment on YouTube about this particular hairband? Uh, no, it's not from, it's not from hairbands, headbands from Hope. Oh, here, let me just adjust it. Um, a viewer sent this to me, actually. Thank you very much. I hope you got my thank you card. Um, it's from Guess, uh, the brand, you know, the, the store company, what have you, Guess is the brand. And I love it. I love that it has this little gold ring here. And I like that it kind of covers the ears here. I just think that kind of frames the face nicely. But some of you have commented, how do I keep my hair bands in place on my head? And to be honest with you guys, my whole life I've had issues with keeping them in place. Ooh, it's so hard being me. I have to keep my hair bands in place. But anyways, they do pop off of my head and I just end up readjusting them. But now that I've been wearing them more, I don't know, I feel like if I, Keep them a little on my ears, I'll stay in place a little better. But to be honest, they do do that creeping thing where all of a sudden the hairband's like up here and you have no idea and you're like, it looks like you're wearing some weird, weird hat for, um, for working in a fast food restaurant, like one of those little paper triangle type hats. I used to work in a fast food establishment that required me to wear a visor actually that was <sighs> so odd. I mean, you know how I'm all about sun protection and whatnot, but this visor was hideous. And I mean, I was indoors and there were no windows, so I didn't need to be as on the sun protection. But yeah, uh, side note, I used to work at Wendy's when I was in high school. So yeah, I could tell you some stories about that, <laughs> which I think you might find entertaining. Wendy's, yeah. I always tell people about their chili, like how, you know, I, I would t just randomly comment about to people, people ask me like, what's it like working there? And like, you know, and so I would tell them a little bit about the chili and it always blew my mind that people were so disgusted and taken aback by how Wendy's makes their chili. Because at the time, and now, even now, at the time I was like, you mean that disgusts you? But the fact that, oh, I could go on and on about the things, <laughs> the things, at least back, back when I worked there. I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, what? as far as eating there now, I haven't eaten at a Wendy's in a long time. The only vegan option they have, which actually is one of their best menu items, and I t definitely recommend, is their baked potato. Get, their baked potatoes somehow are better than any, like any restaurant baked potato I've ever had. I don't know what it is, and I work there. I can't, you know, I can't recall anything specific about how they bake the potatoes, but they are really good. So yeah, aside from that, I mean, I mean, there's no, I have no incentive to go into a Wendy's anymore. Um, but my former employer, I mean, I could tell you some stories about, about that. It was many, many years ago though. <laughs> but it always, I always chuckled to myself because to this day, you will read in forums people like how appalled people are about how Wendy's makes their chili. Um, just Google it if you're not aware. And, but if you, if you've actually worked there, like, you know, that's the least offensive thing that that is crafted backstage. Uh, so yeah, stick to the baked potato. <laughs> that, that I would, I would say you can't, well, I don't know. I wouldn't say you can't go wrong, but yeah, I worked there in high school. It was a long time ago. And I would say while, while the chili preparation is what, is what shocks and appalls people. And like, you'll read it like on Reddit or like fast food workers reveal the secrets of Wendy's and their disgusting chili. And it's like, oh, it's not even scratching the surface, <laughs> not even scratching the surface. 
But yeah, it was really comical when I worked there because I mentioned the visor thing. I feel like I'm going on a tangent. I'm not really giving you guys any perspective here, but that's okay. Um, I they, they made me wear this visor. I mean, everybody had to wear it, but I felt somehow singled out. Um, and it was huge. I mean, it was like wearing a dinner plate on your head. <laughs> it was not attractive. And then, you know, I... I was, I've always been small, a small frame person my whole life, I mean my whole life. And so back then I was smaller than I am now, obviously. And I, the only size of shirt they had was like a triple XL. And so like the sleeves were, were like this rope. I mean, it looked like I was wearing a kimono, but then like you had to button it. And so you had to button it up to here. It looked like I was wearing a pillowcase at all times. I mean, it was the most hideous outfit that I had to wear. And then I had these big boots that I had to wear too. Um, but it was, a, you know, they were a nice employer. I mean, they were, I, I can't complain. Like they were, it wasn't a bad place to work for, but I had some funny stories. Anyways, maybe for another day, if you guys are. Oh, side note, I wanted to comment that I have started using this again. This is the uh, MD, or I shouldn't say it again, I'm using it. The MD Similar Science Mineral uh, beauty balm, light medium. I like this as a BB cream, but I've been putting it over my sunscreen uh, just for some color correction and added sunscreen. It's a mineral only, water resistant, cruelty free, uh, fragrance free, oil free uh, BB cream that uh, zinc titanium dioxide has like a nice matte finish, but it does go on a little streaky. Anyways, I've been using that. I've had it and I want to make sure I use that up. Uh, I just, uh, I've been having, going back and forth with the Coats sunscreen, the, not the Coats, the Claire tinted sunscreen is very similar to Coats, which is one that I recommend for people with darker skin types looking for a sunscreen, the Coats. And the Claire one, this brand that, that makes the conditioning mist, they, they also make a tinted mineral sunscreen that's wonderful, but it's a little too dark for me. And it looks good on my cheeks when I put it on, but I notice that the sides of my face, you know, I'm not great about blending stuff in. And so like right here, there's like, you see it's just like a lot darker on the side of my face and it looks weird. Like this kind of orangey dark brown. So I've kind of backed off on that one. And so I'm using this currently, but uh, yeah, this one is a, a lot lighter. They make a few other shades, um, but yeah, I really like this brand MD Solar Science. So yeah, that's a little hair care product update and sunscreen update. Oh, I got some stuff from The Herb. I'll show you guys. All right, so I reordered just a few things from The Herb. Uh, comment below though on if you would like to see a video of like my must have eye herb favorites, non skincare. I've done plenty of eye herb skincare videos, but how about just like random foods and things that I love buying on there? Cause to be honest, that is mostly what I buy. I do get some skincare on there, but I have enough skincare, but I always need my, my snacks and foods and whatnot. Anyways, yeah, I'd love to do that kind of video for you guys if you are still interested. I know you asked for it in the past. First of all though, I got these Organic Fit Garden of Life protein bars. I don't eat protein bars like as a meal whatsoever. But I love having them uh, just like in my desk and with me, like in my bag. These are really good, specifically this flavor, the chocolate coconut almond. It tastes like an almond joy. Yeah, they're made with pea protein and they've got almonds in them. They're really good. And they're sweetened with like monk fruit or stevia, I think, maybe a combination of the two. And they only have one gram of sugar and 14 grams of protein. And so there's just a nice little snack. I showed the Lakanto brownie mix in my uh, nighttime routine. I ordered some more of it. I make this vegan just by making it with uh, two flax eggs. A flax egg is one tablespoon of ground flax seeds and three tablespoons of water. So I substitute that and then I substitute yeah, um, I make it otherwise the same, just like follow the instructions otherwise. And these are good, they're, they're like gooey. I do recommend making them and letting them sit up overnight. Their chocolate flavor intensifies. It doesn't have any sugar, so it's sweetened with monk fruit. Monk fruit is uh, from, like a, is a type of, I wanna say melon, that just happens to be a really sweet without having any sugar to it. So it won't spike your your insulin, in other words. 
But yeah, I like that. And I also decided to try getting this. I saw they had a powdered sugar monk, monk fruit by Lacanto. I like this brand. So I got that because I want to try making, there's a recipe on here for vegan chocolate frosting and vegan peanut butter frosting. I don't know about all that, but I have some, I have some, I'm really, I really love tahini. And so I thought about mixing this with some tahini and making like a little tahini sweet bites. I thought it would be good. Uh, but again, no, no sugar. I also got these dry roasted unsalted soybeans. These are another great snack that I like to keep with me because they are uh, a good source of protein. So this has 13 grams of protein in one serving. And it's just, you know, again, another quick, easy snack food. In my Thanksgiving vlog, was the last time I purchased this? The Grab Green Power Degreaser. I love this stuff. It works amazing on my countertops. And uh, unfortunately, it has methyl isothiazolinone in it, as do most of these types of products. So that's not great, especially if you are allergic to MI, which is increasingly becoming an issue. All right, I've showed these before. The FRC uh, beverage sticks, these are sugar-free. They have vitamin C in them, but that's not why I drink them. I just drink them for the taste. Yeah, the elderberry thing, um, I hate to burst anybody's bubble, but this has not been substantiated to be helpful for not getting sick. Uh, so, um, it's fine if you want to consume it. Although be careful because elderberry, like if you're making it yourself, it actually can be poisonous. So all that being said, these taste great. <laughs> um, and I'm assuming that the elderberry in this is actually just, I think it just tastes like elderberry. I think they're just putting that on the box to sell you more of it. But anyways, I also decided to try these hydration up electrolyte drink mix flavor what's not grape um because i love those ultima replenishers i like to have one after a run but they're kind of pricey so i decided to give the california gold nutrition ones a whirl everything i've tried by california gold nutrition has been winning um and i love grape <laughs> the grape flavor doesn't taste anything like true grapes let's be honest but yeah so i thought i would give that a try i'll let you guys know how it compares to ultima um, I got some more of my Four Siggy ground mushroom coffee mix. Love this stuff. It's winning in the French press. I love it. Um, I have shown these before, but I got some new flavors. These are the sweet leafed sweet drops. They're stevia flavor drops. I got the English toffee flavor. And I also got the hazelnut flavor. So... You can thank me later for this, but for those of you who like bananas, I know it's a house divided in the comments, banana lovers versus not. If you hate bananas, as a side note, I have a video on banana-free smoothies, but for those of you who love banana, for Teen Banana, I strongly recommend making yourself a little banana frappe. You just get um, a frozen banana and some non-dairy milk and put these toffee drops in and it is so good. Banana frappe, very nice sweet treat. Okay, I showed these in my what I eat in a day. I'm addicted. <laughs> the jungle peanuts. They taste like, I mentioned they taste like Boston baked beans, uh, which if you've never had those, those are like candied peanuts. They tout themselves as superfoods, which is annoying marketing, but whatever, they're good. Uh, they come from the Amazonian rainforest. I think if anything is derived from the Amazonian rainforest, it automatically gets labeled as a superfood. Like I have a friend from Ecuador and I'm just gonna start calling him a superfood because <laughs> I feel like anything from Ecuador, they just, they just call a superfood. Anyways, uh, yeah, these, uh, I mean, they're, they're kind of like peanuts. They taste kind of like peanuts. I mean, they are a type of peanut, I guess. Um, I, I go through this. I can seriously eat this whole bag. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I have a couple of servings of this a day, as you saw in my What I Eat in a Day video. They're really good. I also like to eat Brazil nuts, although to be honest, they're not my favorite nut, but I do recognize that they're a good source of nutrition. So I actually incorporate a few of these. And as a side note, throw a few of these. For those of you who are going to experiment with the banana frappe, throw a few of these into your banana frappe. It will make it extra creamy and good. Um, you should maybe soak, just soak them for a few minutes, just a couple of them. Um, they're really, they're really good. 
And then I got some more Bob Bob's Red Mill Azuki Heritage Beans. I love these. If you've ever had uh, red bean paste, by the way, uh, which is popular in a lot of Asian desserts, uh, it's likely Azuki beans that they sweeten. Um, but I like to just eat them. I cooked these in my Kosari pressure cooker. Yeah, I use my Kosari cooker, multi cooker, so much, you guys. I make yogurt in it at least once a week. I make, I do all of my, I cook all of my beans in there. And cooking, cooking beans from dry is so fast once you have a pressure cooker. So I use it for that. And then I use the slow cooker function pretty much on a nightly basis for dinner. Uh, the only thing I don't use, actually, I take that back. The steam, the steam veggie setting, I've been using more lately. I don't use it that often because if you actually use it to steam veggies, they come out kind of mushy. They come out super mushy, not kind of mushy, super mushy. But I've been using it to make my platanos. I don't have my light on in here, so I'll probably look awful um, in this lighting. But yeah, that's everything that I got from the herb. Uh, yeah, I use my Kosari multi cooker to make platanos. So yeah, that's a little herb haul. Random medley of stuff in today's pseudo vlog. I didn't go anywhere or really do anything. I just talked at you. So thank you for listening to me today. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.